Hello, everyone. Welcome to Life Out Loud. I'm Junie Moon, your host, and I am so excited you're here. Today we have a great show, and I am i know we're going to have a blast. But before we dive into the show, I just want to just, oh, you know what? I'm talking, and you're seeing the guest. So I have you on the screen, Andy. Everybody's been looking at you while I was talking. So that's live TV for you. So I'm Junie Moon, and I'm the one that was just speaking. It looked like Andy was the one, but it was me. So I am a transformational coach, and I help people get out of their way so that they can live inspired, expressive, full lives. So I help people lower their inner critic voice down, way down, so that they can feel better about who they are and step strongly and boldly into their choices and, and what they want to create for themselves. And we need all of us to show up in this world like that, fully inspired. And, and that's why it's my mission to help each and every person that's interested to shine their light. And so I work individually, I do workshops around the country, and I have the innercritictamer.com website for you to go check out and get information. You can even pick up my ebook, it's free, How to Tame Your Inner Critic. And uh, yes, so my mission is to help people soar in their life. So I created Life Out Loud, which is my live show where I bring people that are leaders of our time, people that are inspiring me and inspiring others to live fully, people that are the pioneers that, um, that are walking their talk and making a difference. And I know that today's guest, who you've already seen, you've already peeked at him, uh, my bad with my tech, uh, but Andy Golub is in the house. Andy Golub is, is such an inspiration to me. I'm so thrilled to have him here. And so I want to read to you a little bit about who he is. So, so Andy is a world-renowned artist, best known for painting nude models in the public streets of New York City, which resulted in legal battles that ultimately changed New York's public nudity laws. How cool is that? That's what you call mission, guys. Um, but it's Golub's approach to the art itself that is truly groundbreaking. Golub paints without a plan. He forms a spiritual connection with each of his models, which inspires his art and he paints models of all shapes, sizes, and genders. And I know that personally because he painted me, and I didn't know what he was painting on me at first until he got into his zone, and we'll talk about that, I'm sure. And then he created what I believe a beautiful piece of, of artwork on my body. So through his art, uh, Golub shatters the superficial environment we accept without question and replaces it with an environment based on human connection and the human spirit. How amazing is that, right? And in 2014, he started Body Painting Day. We're totally going to talk about that because it's coming up again this summer. And in its second year, uh, he featured 70 artists and 100 models, and they were painted in the streets of New York City. And he also has done it in Amsterdam, and that's also coming up. So Body Painting Day is a celebration of the human body and the voice of the artist, which is often missing from our world. That is so true. So along with painting on people, Andy also paints on canvases, murals, and almost any object from clothing to furniture to cars. I saw his car. It's really cool. But painting people has a special place in his heart because as he explains it, people have a soul. Equally important to the art itself is the experience that is shared with the model and often the public. So that is who I have on the show. So. Here we go. Let's get you on the camera again. Welcome, Andy. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm so glad you're here today. Thank you for being here and, and sharing who you are with all of us. I'm, I'm so psyched. So, um, so I always start off our, our show with your journey. You know, I, I, you know, I don't know. Were, were you born with a paintbrush in your hand? Were, when you were a child, were you inspired to do great artwork and that was your mission? Might you had a, a long and winding journey in, in different categories that brought you here. So give us a peek about your life and what's brought you to this point. Well, I started uh, doing art in, in school, um, really middle school. I think it was uh, difficult for me to sit in class all day long, six hours a day, listening to people speak uh, in class and 
I just doodled all the time. I was able to listen, but if I had to just sit there without, uh, you know, being able to draw, I probably would have been put on uh, some of those ADD drugs that are very popular today. Um, but I never, you know, I, I always had that as an outlet. I think um, as time gone, has gone on, um, my art has sort of just been a vehicle for me to sort of just express uh, my ideas. I feel like when I paint or draw that I'm, I'm reaching in for something personal, um, much more than, for instance, um, trying to uh, uh, make a realistic depiction of something or even to uh, really, you know, show a real specific skill set. You know, it's really a, a form of, of connection and communication. So um, I feel like maybe my art to me feels a lot like, uh, maybe a lot more like poetry or almost stand-up comedy or just some kind of... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Some kind of you know way of uh, you know connecting with people and I think a lot of times people look at art and the the question that people ask is you know is it good mm. and, and I think that I mean look I mean people they could do how you know they could do things however they want but for me you know I'm when I if me and you having a conversation you know I'm not thinking is Junie good I'm thinking you know what is she saying what is she about and so I think the idea of is it good sort of, you know, really shows that there's uh, very much a focus on, um, I guess you could say form over function, uh, th that, you know, um, you know, if you think about, uh, you write a, um, something in school for an essay and people are more interested in making sure that you don't make any mistakes or grammatical errors, the way in which things are, are done seems to be more important than the, the message or the ideas behind it. So, right. That's my general feeling about life and art. I feel a little blessed that uh, I was able to sort of take my own art and use it in this uh, in in this in this way. You know, it's interesting. My grandmother, um, who's no longer with us, but she was this amazing artist uh, and just all different mediums and so creative. And uh, I just always admired how creative she was. She could just come up with these ideas and, and it just would spill out of her. And I, and, and like you, like you, it just kind of organically comes out like poetry or comedy or whatever it is. You know, I, I admire it so much because I'm the opposite. I've been, like someone can sit in front of me and, and I can copy them. I could, I'm a good copier, but I've never been that, that um, creative inspirational uh, I, ha I don't have that skill set. I don't have that that uh, innate um, gift that you have. And so, um, so I'm wondering, when did you discover that you had this? You said in school that you, you know, you were drawn to art. Uh, did you know when you were a kid that you wanted to be an artist? Did your parents support you in that? How, how did you get to be where you are? Well, I mean, the the, the thing that I'm at right now, the word that I, the the word of the day for me or maybe for more than a day is uh, identity. You know, we, we identify ourselves with something and we, uh, we work hard towards achieving uh, our ability to identify with something. I never thought of myself as one day I hope to be an artist, mm. that I was always an artist <laughs> when mm. I, knew I was an artist. And uh, I think people sort of, you know, create these arbitrary lines between um, being and wanting to be. I think we always are even if we're in a state of wanting to be. Sorry that I'm saying it in such a confusing way with all these words, but that's how I see it. So w when I was in a, when I was, um, uh, when I was doing art and high school, mostly it was really when I really, uh, I don't want to say my best work, but that's when I was like really, you know, into it for the first time. Um, like in middle school, I was sort of doing comic book kind of stuff and it was like sort of silly and I was finding myself and all. Huh high school I was really you know really into it. and I was drawing these faces uh, which I still do today it's different but similar and when I did the faces in high school um, they were actually expressing how I felt and there would be very subtle things like you know there would be you might look at the face that I would draw and it looks like just sort of boring just like a face there no expression and stuff but there actually was a lot of expression it was just it was it was sort of in a language and uh, and I and I wasn't conscious of it. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't going to be like, oh, I want to draw something to express 
this feeling of vague ambiguity, you know, I just was doodling. And then afterwards I looked at it and I was like, wow, that's really, you know, that's how I feel. And um, so I felt that there was something sort of magical about it uh, mm. uh, because I was channeling something, you know, um, and I think that maybe that's the magic of art, just like music and, you know, different things have something where you sort of hit into some kind of zone or whatever. And um, uh, whenever I would try to uh, draw some feeling and expression, like I'm going to draw someone really, really angry, they never looked angry. They just looked like some. Actually, I was still just expressing my true feelings, even when I didn't want to. So I was sort of trapped in there, which, you know, at some point, I think, you know, you just sort of need to embrace yourself um, for better or for worse. I mean, you know, everybody would look or listening to an interview like this everybody would say oh it's better to be expressing yourself okay that's fine but it seems that most a lot of time trying to seem like something to get the reactions that they want so i don't know how many i mean it's a choice in some level but in another level i think we're just sort of destined to sort of you know be something i think at least it is for me yeah you got a little choppy, um, and because you were choppy, I can't ask the questions because I didn't hear certain things, but the gist I'm hearing is we're vehicles, and things are going to flow through us, and we can try to create it in a certain way, but at the end of the day, if we can step out of our own way and just let things flow through us, that, you know, that magic happens. And, um, and I was just thinking, well, a lot of the people that are watching the show know that, that you painted me and that I didn't know what you were going to paint on me uh, and, and until I opened my eyes and it was done. And, I, and when I described the process to people, that was what I said. I'm like, he, get, he went into some zone. That's exactly how, how it looked like. It went in, you went into some trance. Like you just you stood in front of me and you just kind of stopped and you just kind of were in it. And then it just, the paintbrush moved. You know, it was like, like the energy just like zapped right through you and, and you were just guided. And I'm, I'm wondering... Um, how does that feel to you? And is there ever a time that you don't have that flow happen? All right. Well, <laughs> all right. That sounds serious. <laughs> first of all, you know, can you hear me? Can I do hear you. Yeah. Uh, with regard to getting out of your own way, um, I think that a lot of times it's not really getting out of your own way. It's getting other people out of your way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure. A lot of things that really stop us from being who we are are other people really having impact on us. Mm. Well, let me ask you a question. When you say impact, are you saying impact because of what they think and then how we feel about it or impact because they're literally in our own way? Well, both, but I think mostly it's sort of in our minds. Great. Mm -hmm. People are um, judging us and mm -hmm. making us doubt ourselves. And while ultimately it's an illusion because it's in our minds, the illusion, it, it, it points to specific people. And those people may be your parents or whoever, and you may have the opportunity to confront them directly in real life, not just the voice of them in your mind. And that, you know, all of a sudden it frees you. Like, for instance, I may be jumping a little bit ahead, but a lot of models, you know, they say that getting painted, especially getting painted in public, which, you know, would be something that I think you would really enjoy, uh, is very liberating. And the reason it's liberating is because they're actually battling these voices in their minds. And by, by doing something, not just saying I'm good and I'm okay, but actually doing something to sort of say, look, I'm, you know, this doing something courageous, doing something scary, doing something that's challenging, sort of, it makes it that everything less scary and less courageous and less challenging, you know, becomes much easier. Like standing on a very high ladder, once you stand yep. up 20 rungs, standing up 10 rungs is, is not a big deal. 
Absolutely, Andy. We're on the same page. We're actually saying the exact same thing, just a different different way of looking at it a little bit. Because, I mean, in shadow work, that's what we talk about. We talk about the internal dialogue that gets in our own way. So when I say get out of our own way, it's exactly that. It's it's cleaning out other people's opinions and judgments and, and the experiences that have shaped us. And what I love of what you said about, you know, being out there and doing the body painting day by being in it. And, and experiencing this, you know, the body painting, the nakedness, whatever it is, in a new way, we can rewire some of the old programming. Whether we're talking to somebody that we had an issue with, like our parents, or we're doing something like that, or the, you know, or the latter example. That's what I do in shadow work. So it, it, it's so cool that you said that. It, by literally putting ourselves in a new experience, we get to ship, shift and change some of the old baggage, all the, the inner dialogue that does stop us. So it's what you're doing, what you're offering, not only for the, the models and the people that, you know, that are, that are exposing, you know, parts of themselves they haven't exposed probably ever, uh, you're letting other people witness it too and, um, and have people also see from the outside, wow, they are being courageous and, and maybe question whether they can do it too. So again, kudos to the, the platform that you've, you've created for people and uh, and the opportunity for people to be fully expressed I mean that's what I ke that's what I love about you I mean this the work you do is is such an expression of the truth of the spirit it's not just about nakedness it's about art maybe talk to us a little bit about the power of art the power of transforming bodies and and visual experiences for people <sighs> I don't know. I mean, um, you know, when you, uh, you know, when you do a painting, it, uh, you know, and you're in some kind of zone, then, um, you know, it feels nice. Um, but you're also, I think, not so conscious of the moment. You're just sort of in this other sort of other zone. And uh, I think it's a weird thing in a sense that some of the best experiences that we have are the ones that we're least least conscious. So it's sort of hard to describe. Mm. I can't say that for the years that I was doing body, I'm still doing it. I mean, that had been doing body painting in the streets. Um, you know, it's not, I mean, there's positives to it, but there's also, um, I don't know if negatives is the right word, but there's negatives to it. Like in other words, it's imagine that you're, you know, you're, you're, it's, it's, there's something confrontational about it. Sure. I'm not trying to be confrontational. I'm trying to be positive in things. And I think the reason that the models like it so much is because I sort of handle the confrontational part. If the cops come over, I'm the one who talks to them. I'm the one who deals with it. If someone's perving, it's like that's it's 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 on me to sort of stand up to it. So there's a lot of things that about it that you know. I think the idea of sort of overcoming things in in your life is very often um, not really pleasant as you're going through it, you know. Uh, and so I think maybe sometimes people are always looking for pleasant. And, uh, and if you are, then, you know, it's probably going to be a problem if you want to try to, you know, expand yourself. I mean, it's, look, art is just a thing, you know, I mean, you know, if you do enough of it, you know, you can express yourself in it, you know, like people express themselves when they play chess, you know, some people play, you know, very methodical, some people go man for man, some people are very aggressive, you know, it's some people just like the complexities of things. It's sort of like there's just people express themselves the way they drive cars and, you know, and, and the way they speak, the way they move, the way they dress. It's, it's sort of, it's just another thing, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, that's how I see it. So why do you do what you do? What, what is your, what's the passion behind the body painting day? Why? Why, why not just do it on small scales? Why, why, why do you do what you do? I, I mean, I love what you do. And, and we actually have someone in the chat room that mentioned how he's looking. Neil, hello, <laughs> mentioning that he's looking forward to body painting day. I'd like to know what inspires you to do it. What, what calls you to do it, knowing that there will be challenges with the cops and, and different things? Well, 
I think in the way that I'm probably the most blessed and the way I'm most uh, happy uh, about um, my, my life is that I think I've really uh, come to understand like what I'm really here for. And uh, I don't know exactly, you know, who put me here or, or designed me or <laughs> I love that. But I do believe that we're here for a purpose. I do. And mm. I believe that my purpose is to help um, other people um, find their true essence. And uh, I think that when I body paint in public, I think I'm probably more inspired to share the art mm. than make the art. That the, the reason why, to some extent, I mean, there's a part of me that really needs to draw because if I get stressed or a lot of my mind, like, you know, but then sometimes I, drawing doesn't do it. I have to write a poem and sometimes I just talk or, you know what I mean? But, you know, I, I do draw, you know, I do have the desire to make art, you know, on its own right. But when I'm in public, I put the best that I put, I, I work the hardest. Sometimes I'm in public painting. I'm just not in the mood to paint that day, but I don't just paint. I paint with the most honesty, the most integrity. I try to connect with the model. I try to show people what is possible by, by doing it. So it, it, I would say that the idea, I mean, I've talked to a lot of artists, you know, and a lot of artists will say things like, you know, I want to be known as one of the greatest artists or I want to be a super famous artist or I want to be in the history books of the museum or whatever. And, and, and the truth is, is the thing that really inspires me is to inspire others to believe in their own inner voice and uh, doing it in public really creates an opportunity to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky that we live in a state and city that allows for nudity in public for art purposes. There's virtually no other places that allows it. That being said, I did have to get arrested in order to, um, in order to clarify that it's legal. Um, but, and I'm not saying it's, it was a small price, but it was legal. I did call up, you know, some lawyers and I had some top notch lawyers that were willing to sort of just back me for the uh, the idea of what I was doing, and uh, so I took full advantage of it. Um, but nonetheless, you know, try this in Kentucky. You know, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry Kentucky. Um, I, I love Kentucky, but uh, but I'm just saying any other place. It's it's almost almost no other place, uh, really around the world, even where this is the type of thing that's legal. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, that that's hysterical about the Kentucky because I, you know, I, I did a press release about my my video project. Uh, you know, you painted me, and I'm doing a, a mini documentary about healing my shame around body issues and having you paint me. And in the video, there is me and and uh, and you, <laughs> and uh, and so I did a press release. And of all of the places in the country that picked up the press release, one was in Kentucky. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I have that's so funny. I feel a little guilty now because one of my favorite body painters is this girl, Michelle Seifert Weiss, who's <laughs> very talented and she is, in, she is from Kentucky and I always just make fun of her, not because I, I don't even know anything about Kentucky, it's just something about yeah. the so it's probably a form of racism or something, you know. That we, <laughs> you know. we love you, Kentucky, and I actually have some dear, dear friends in Kentucky, so all good, all good, but that's just, that's so funny. But again, uh, you know, your purpose, uh, that's what I hear. It's like your purpose is just moving you forward. And that even when you're not necessarily in the mood, that you're just pulled and that you show up in your authentic self, whatever whatever mood you're in, and, and, and you do what you do. And that inspiring others, I mean, that's just so beautiful. That's a, that's a pretty amazing purpose to be on this planet, to inspire others. The other thing I, I love what you said about was, you know, if you're, you're – struggling or I don't remember exactly the word you use but like when you're in a funk you know maybe you'll do some painting drawing maybe you'll do some poetry I mean that's the power of art I mean that to me is the power of art it's it's a way to connect to to um, what I call higher source um, and and connect in heart energy to, to get out of our busy brains and 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 to, to calm ourselves down and to transform the moment into what could be potentially a, a pretty powerful moment um, so I, I know music and dance that does that for me but even the show I mean you know this is kind of an an 
artistic expression of human beings chatting, you know? So uh, it's very powerful. What else do you want to talk about in reference to your art? I know you, you paint bodies, you paint sculptures, you combine bodies, like many, many bodies together to do these, these murals of bodies. I mean, tell us more about how that comes to be and, and I don't know, tell us more about all the pieces of artwork you do. <laughs> Well, I've been working on uh, a series of paintings called uh, uh, Human Canvas, where a, a group of models lay on the ground and their bodies sort of squish together and form like a, just a, a giant, you know, lumpy human canvas. And uh, it's very difficult and challenging to, from a physical point of view, I'm actually working on one on uh, in a few days where I'll have 20 models, you know, so it's just, it, there's a lot of process involved and shooting it from above and there's so much work that needs to get done. It's, it's a lot of fun and there's, I'm not really sure exactly what it means because uh, a lot of times when I paint people um, as an individual, then I sort of connect with them as an individual. Mm -hmm. When you're painting a group, it's like there's another, there's a different kind of vibe because it's, it's, it's almost like as if there's, I don't want to say it's like a shared consciousness, but that there's like, there's, there's a singular energy that sort of is created. And it's an energy of, of trust. Uh, it's an energy of, I don't know, like sort of people embracing themselves. And I think people really are happy with it, you know, like with the experience of it. And for me to create the environment, I just focus on making like the best piece of art that I can. So sometimes everyone's laughing and having fun and I'm maybe grumpy or stressed or just in a, in a little bit of a different mindset. And I think when people see that, you know, not that so much being grumpy makes people happy, but that, that they know that they're not, be, that they're being seen in a certain way that I guess makes them feel accepted or makes them feel like they're doing something for a purpose. Right. I, honestly, I, I feel like, and then there's this other weird dynamic where when everybody's laying together, that it's almost as if everyone feels like they're part of one big thing. Mm. And even though everybody has their own uh, mind, there's something, there's a, a sense of this very temporary, very intimate sense of community uh, it's it's hard to describe and um it feels right i don't really understand it but um i think they're the pictures are pretty amazing to look at oh my god they're they are phenomenal 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 love it thank you so okay so i'm gonna try something here I, somebody has a question and um i'm gonna see if we could actually bring them on the screen. I'm not sure um, if we can. I'm um, not sure. How do I do that? I don't think so. Um, okay. So for Greg, you wanted a qu you have a question, so I'm going to invite you to just write it in the chat room because I actually don't know how to pull you up on the screen. I only have the chat room open. And Nicole has a question for you. Nicole says, hi, Andy. What are your short-term and long-term aspirations of Body Painting Day? Where would you like to see it go in the future? Well, I mean, this summer, you know, we're doing it in New York. Uh, we're doing it in Amsterdam. Uh, there are several other cities that um, I've been having discussions with. Uh, I don't want to mention them because then, you know, if it doesn't happen or if it does happen, but there are, you know, it's, there, there are several cities in the U.S., uh, in potentially Canada and potentially, uh, you know, Europe that, you know, may or may not happen. So I think, you know, it's uh, great to uh, do it in other cities. I could also say that, you know, a very important point to... To, to speak to and, and I've been it's been on my mind and so this is almost an opportunity for me to bring it up you know I don't think that being um, really thin is better than being uh, big but I also don't think being big is better than being thin and I don't think that being straight is better than being gay but I don't think being gay is better than being straight and I think that you know that sort of gets confused very often that when we sort of go into something about body acceptance, 
that is almost as if it seems like we're sort of celebrating the the things that have normally been seen in a negative way and now we're going to flip it i don't believe in flipping it i just believe in being sort of neutral yes that um when i paint a person even if a person let's say brings a very negative vibe for instance i don't think a person with a negative vibe is uh worse than a person with a positive vibe from an art point of view because it's reality there's something real there i don't think they, they i think people should just sort of let all your 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 sort of your truth come out so then uh there are paintings that i'll make that might seem you know to be intense or or negative or you know just the way it is and i'm i'm cool with that and i think it's the same thing with painting in different countries while everyone would say oh my god it would be amazing to paint in paris or oh my god it'd be amazing to paint in south africa i think it's sort of like it's just sort of taking what i do and my perspective and just having it interact with whatever is there in a you know in a genuine way so i i would love to bring it to as many cities as i can mm. i can tell you it's not easy especially in today's world the it's people are you know it's not easy because of the fact that we're doing full nude men and women yep and uh uh you know and that's just that's just the way it is it's people are and 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 right now we got it in new york city this year we're doing the third one in new york but i don't take it for granted i mean it, you know who knows how many times we're going to be able to do this and you could see what's going on in times square they're making a huge deal out of women's boobs being out so you know who knows where it goes from here and you've paved the way for lots of different things to happen, which is cool. And again, in the name of art, um, we have a bunch of questions popping up here. This is like, wow, this is exciting. Okay, Rashad wants to know the most challenging aspect of painting women. Is there anything challenging about painting women? Or is it just painting? No, I mean, I think it's, I think, um, you know, you could look at it in different ways. I mean, you know, I, I painted a, a woman um who uh had terminal breast cancer i painted her three times uh she passed about a year ago and i painted her when she was in the hospice her name was freddie um and i painted her while she was in the hospital and after i painted her like i climbed into the bed with her and we took a photo you know and 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 the reason i'm able to do that is because and, and i think other body painters have this as well is there are certain ways in which I'm able to connect and then other ways I'm able to disconnect. If I got emotionally involved, if I really started thinking and dealing with this person and, 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 you know, emotionally, it would just be, it would be very overwhelming, you know, and, and I wouldn't be able to paint. And when I painted her, I, um, I remember I have a video of it and I, I remember I come in and, and the woman's crying and everyone's like got red eyes and I come in and I'm just like, I need a table to put my paints on. You know, I wasn't trying to be mean. I just was like, yeah. I'm trying to make a painting here. You know what I mean? Like mm. that, or I could be a counselor. I mean, like I can't, you know? And so I think that <laughs> you know, I've painted some very beautiful women that are very attractive and the way in which I do it is somehow I, I disconnect from that. I'm not looking at them like, uh, like it's my cousin. I'm just looking at them and, not allowing myself to sort of see them in a sexual way mm -hmm. and uh i think and a lot of guys have said to me they're like you know oh my god you know how how do you how do you do that you know but uh you know no one really asks you know uh you know a doctor who's giving a breast exam or a gynecologist how they're not having sexual thoughts you know with people out maybe they are but the point is that um it's sort of people assume that they're professional and that they're able to do it. Yeah. My dedication to my art is such that, uh, you know, my dedication to my art is such that if I allow myself to sort of, you know, see this person sexually, then I, I lose the ability to sort of connect with them in yeah. a more, um, you know, intimate uh, way. Yeah, totally. That's great. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, so Greg says, Andy, I pose for artists and college classes. It's on my bucket list to be body painted. What's your selection process that you use to choose the models for New York Body Painting Day? And maybe, you know, maybe take a minute here and talk about the New York Body Painting Day and how people can find out about it. 
we have a website, uh, which is bodypaintingday.org, O-R-G. Um, and uh, we uh, will be, within a week, we're going to be uh, opening up applications for people to apply. There will be a small fee uh, to be a part of it because uh, there's so many expenses to run this event. Wow. Are you there? Yeah, I, I'm. my computer just uh, clicked out, so I'm pushing buttons to make it come back. Yeah, um, we're here. We're both here. Can you but see I don't know if anybody else is here. <laughs> it says live. We lost the chat, man. But we're here. Okay, let's not worry about it, because you and I are live. I'm assuming that they're there, and I actually looked at most of the... Um, the chat, so um, you're still with me, right? Because we're live. We just don't have the chat. I don't know why that went out. So, um, you me? yeah, we're good. It's just I don't have the chat. So um, I don't remember people's names, uh, but I remember somebody asked about. Well, well, fi finish up what you were saying about the body painting day, about going to the the site. Well, so you know, someone asked, you know, what what's the process of selecting models, and I could say that. You know, there's many more models that want to participate than are able to. And uh, the only thing that I really uh, think would really make um, the best difference is people will have the opportunity to say why they want to be a part of it. And, if, and, and a lot of people have very personal stories that sort of brought them there. And the more mm -hmm. that they share, uh, the, 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 the more it's hard to not have them part of it knowing how, you know, how significant uh, it is for them. So, so share your story. <laughs> I could say, yeah. Yeah, good. Yes. Um, and I didn't get to read Yaja's complete thing. She wrote a bunch of things. First, she said she loved you. Then she said she loves me too, which was good because I was feeling really sad. Uh, but then she started writing about her experience of the body painting day. And I obviously didn't get to read the whole thing, but I did see her saying it was life changing. So uh, I, I can only imagine how powerful it is. I'm sad I'll be out of town when you're doing it. But uh, I know people that went there and thought it was just the most phenomenal thing to witness and to experience. So if it's something that you're curious about, you know, go to go to his site and and check it out. Um, you could also go to my site that in that's about the project I'm doing with Andy called NakedAndRevealed.com. I should have mentioned that earlier. So NakedAndRevealed.com. That's the uh, about the journey I've had with the body painting and the documentary, and I have a GoFundMe for the expenses for that too. Guys, it costs us a lot of money to to live in our purpose and and change the world. So definitely uh, keep on top of Andy's uh, site because he's going to have a Kickstarter going soon, and he needs some support to make this a massively awesome, perfect day. So, um, what else do you want to tell our viewers? One of the things that's going in going on in Times Square right now is there was a whole bunch of controversy surrounding the desnudas, and there was a whole bunch of controversy uh, surrounding uh, some of these uh, mascot characters like Spider-Man and all this that are mm. uh, soliciting money from people, et cetera. And they, they're right now coming up with uh, passing legislation. I don't know if it passed yet or not, but it looks like everybody's in favor of this legislation that is going to create very specific zones for people soliciting money that are for the for the cartoon characters and for the topless women, but not for the naked cowboy. So there's there's while, while topless is legal in New York City, they're making a distinction between female toplessness and male toplessness. And in a, in a in a day where everybody throws the word um, uh, a feminist around like it's uh, you know like I don't know like it's cheesecake or something, I don't know why I said cheesecake, but well, <laughs> so so easily it's 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 sort of upsetting to me that this while they're having big parades of of free the nipple and stuff that what that nobody says a word while there's being the most vocal form of anti-female, uh, even the fact that they're covering it like that. They're saying the costume characters and topless women. And it's just like, 
the law has been clear since 1991. Women are allowed to be topless. And except for the, the few people like, uh, uh, well, there's a few women who have like been pioneers and been going around topless. Holly Van Voust and uh, Moira Johnston are two people that I know that would walk around New York City for long periods of time topless, harassed by cops, harassed by people to make it so that women sort of are not, you know, put in a box like this. And then everyone just sort of forgets about it. I, I'm, I'm very happy to do Body Painting Day to show, you know, to show that, uh, you know, the, the, the idea that humans are humans and people are people and bodies are bodies. And, mm -hmm. and it's, I think it's very positive, um, but it really makes me feel like I should just be continually coming into Times Square to sort of um, try to at least undo some of the, the damage that's being done by this, this, uh, this attitude. Yeah. The, the mayor, the mayor and the governor have been very clear. They're like, we do not like these topless women. But the naked cowboy has been topless for for a decade. You know, we we've come a long way, and and people like you doing what you're doing, it, it it continues to bring us further down the road and making a difference. But yeah, I mean, that's why we're having these conversations, you and me, and and people walking around. Those two women you mentioned, that's awesome. But there's there's more work to be done. I'm happy to say the chat room's up. So real quickly, uh, Greg, I certainly hope to be part of such a unique event. After seeing the pictures and videos from last year, it has only served to increase my interest. So Greg, make sure you go to the the website and put your application in and uh, Nicole mentioned Rashad mentioned had, had a question I'm not sure if this was the question but I remember there was a question before about um, something about do you know what you're painting on your um, your uh, models before you paint um, I know you you didn't with me you said you were just going to show up and get in the zone and and feel into it and connect to my spirit and see what came through um, is that always how you work or are there times when you do have a specific uh, idea for the, the the models no it's it's how I work and I think it's very important because if you're actually including the the spirit of the model in your work you have to be open to your work being to being whatever it turns out to be. If I decided what my painting, when I painted you, if I decided what my painting was going to be, then you're not part of that painting whatsoever. The painting is just on you the way it's on a piece of paper. You mm. have a spirit, you have a soul, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I don't just pride myself, but the importance of the moment is really what the painting is all about. Yeah. Makes sense. And that was what, that was actually part of my journey um, to the painting day. You know, being that it was very challenging for me to even do this. It wasn't challenging for me to have you paint me. I was okay with that. I was actually excited about that. But then getting videotaped for the whole world to see, that was a little uncomfortable for me. And so leading up to the day, not knowing what you were going to paint on me, that was part of my surrendering. That was part of my trusting that the exact art is going to come through you however it's supposed to be you're going to connect with me however that's supposed to connect and and it will flow and and certainly it made me so happy we're actually at time and i see all the eat that the chats coming in so let's just see what else is here real quickly uh so yaj um quite confronting for many yeah when people have issues with anything it's confronting for sure especially when it comes to nudity especially because it taps into sexuality Two separate things, but you know, they come together. Um, and fascinating to watch people's reactions. It was the whole point for her. So seeing what people experienced by, um, by the whole uh, body painting day. Yep. And to reach people in some way. Absolutely, Aj. Absolutely. And that's, that's just, again, um, the power of what you do. You, you are using a medium, the human body, <laughs> to, to uh, bring such beauty out into the world. And body, mind, and spirit, it's, it's really phenomenal. Any closing words, anything else you'd like to share with our watchers, listeners? The only thing I would like to say is maybe a little, a little theoretical, but the only way for us all to get together, the only way for us all to sort of grow is to grow together. And to grow together means that when somebody disagrees with you, when somebody does something that makes you uncomfortable or that you think is wrong or bad, or you just disagree for whatever reason, to not attack that person, but to sort of listen to that person and then share your feelings. 
And that's the only way for us all to sort of connect with each other. And, and I think that uh, we're in an environment, especially with all of the political stuff that we're inundated with, where we're sort of being trained to sort of attack and vilify and, and to, to judge and categorize. And if we're able to sort of have these, the inner strength to sort of be vulnerable, to listen to people who are saying things that we just sort of say no way, but to actually say, no, I'm gonna hear them out. I think that's the healthiest way for us to be as individuals and the healthiest way for us to be as a society. And uh, I don't think we're doing particularly so good in this area, but uh, I don't think there's anything we can do other than try to do the best and be the best within the environment we're in. Wow, I'm gonna underline that for sure. I mean, really, that, that's that's not just society changing, that's world changing. If we could actually you know, see each other, really see each other and connect in a deep way, and 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 hear each other in in our hearts you know that that can make a world of difference how often do we really feel heard how often do we really feel like somebody is taking us in fully and when we're you know in a confrontational situation where somebody has a different viewpoint or belief or is is sending us you know energy like walking down the street naked with you know body painting and people are saying god knows what they're saying some people are with it some people aren't to be able to come from that place of maybe even curiosity where are they coming from and, and what is it they're really wanting to say and and um, and what's happening here uh, i i think i love the word curiosity because to me it opens us up to to the wonder of what's happening. And if we can really open up to each other in that way, we can really learn a lot about each other and hopefully heal. Um, I do see one more comment from Yaj. I missed it before I meant said the other comments. Um, the spectators and people on the street innocently walking down the street in New York City and being confronted with two huge double-decker buses with 100 painted naked people on top um, hooting and I'm assuming it's hooting, not hooting. Hooting and waving with joy. Um, yes, that could very well uh, spark some some uh, interesting uh, reactions. <laughs> oh my God, I wish I had seen that. Anyway, we are at time. Andy, thank you so much for being here. Tell tell them again your website, please. Uh, there's two websites. There's bodypaintingday.org. And then my own personal artistic website is andygolub.com, A-N-D-Y-G-O-L-U-B.com. Great. And when is the Body Painting Day? Do you have a date? New York City Body Painting Day is Saturday, July 9, and Amsterdam Body Painting Day is uh, Saturday, August 20. And um, New York will have 100 uh, artists and 100 uh, painted models. And uh, Amsterdam will have 50 and 50. And uh, as you had said earlier, we have a, a Kickstarter coming up. So this is uh, all dependent on our, make, our ability to make sure that we have people support the event. Awesome. So go to his website, keep up on what he's doing. and. Support it, share it on Facebook, social media, man. That's that's a powerful resource for all of us. And in reference to um, him painting me and my project, it's nakedandrevealed.com. Guys, thanks for being with us today. This is a, a hot topic, self-expression and beauty and art and and you know, love, you know, because that's what this is about, connecting heart to heart and spirits connecting to spirits. So Andy, this has been such a, a treat and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys, be well and uh, blessings to you all.